Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. We've had a little bit of a break uh, over on the channel, and uh, I believe I last left you needing to sneeze for uh, about an hour's worth of hay fever drama. Well, happy to uh, happy to announce I got that sneeze, and it was brilliant. Um, anyway, we've had a, a, a little break, and uh, we are back today with some spatial audio with Martin Rieger, uh, who's joined us from the... Uh, well, you did a, a German stream with Adobe, right? Uh, welcome. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Uh, cheers from Munich. Um, now we're doing, yeah, the English version of spatial audio. <laughs> and uh, this is something that I am very keen uh, and excited to hear about, um, quite literally on the theory of things, but also in my ears. So make sure you've got your best, uh, your best ears for the afternoon. Um, would you recommend headphones for this? Earphones, possibly? If, if yes, you have headphones? please, definitely. And if possible, uh, uh, like wired headphones, because Bluetooth headphones tend to have this thing where they break everything to mono because they think you are on a phone call. So make sure you really plug in your headphones. And we are definitely going to not only talk about spatial audio, but experience it, because this is where people get, oh, what even is that? So we have very fun examples here. Amazing. I am looking forward to this. Uh, we've got plenty of people in the chat. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, I can see Caroline, Andreas, Sean, Angus, Kirsty, uh, Vikram, Oliver, uh, Sandrine, Stephen, all sorts of people. Hello, hello. Uh, welcome back to Adobe Live. So for those of you who may be watching this on YouTube, that's cool. You can carry on watching there. But if you'd like to join in with the chat, come and join us on behance.net. Uh, sign in and uh, join in with the chat. It's uh, always good to see new people, uh, get some questions going, and uh, we may ask some questions back to you and, and see how you're feeling with the stream and what's going on, and we can sort of direct where we'd like things to go. Um, so yeah, make sure you join us on behance.net for the uh, live chat. Right, Martin, what have we got to, uh, to see and hear today? Um, I prepared quite a lot. Maybe let's uh, wait for the questions uh, in between. Feel free to interrupt. Feel free to ask because spatial audio is such a new topic and nobody really get like gets what it is. So we will start like very simple. Get everybody in the same boat on the same page basically. And like what's the technology behind? What can we expect from the future? And then I have like some listening examples with bizarre looking microphones. And then we will jump into Premiere and see how you can literally work with 3D audio inside of Premiere. So uh, you can look forward to that. All right. Wow. So... Should we uh, should we maybe explain a little bit on spatial audio? Because I feel like I've got a, a kind of a, an understanding of it. I've experienced things like Dolby Atmos with headphones and other things. But for those who are unaware, just a, a, a quick rundown of what is spatial audio? I can do that with a slide I prepared. <laughs> if, you, if you if you don't mind. Jumping ahead. <laughs> okay, maybe let's let's uh, just jump right into it if you don't mind. And I have uh, yeah, we, we we can do it in any order you want because 3D audio. What even is that? Fun fact: in Germany, it's called 3D audio according to Apple, and in 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 the UK, it's called spatial audio. But it's the same thing. So you can guess there are many words to describe the experience of having three-dimensional sound and we humans are used to have um, like 3D sound all the time. This is what we know. If we don't have headphones, we know how it sounds like when a car passes by, when there's somebody knocking at the door behind you. We know that. But since a, a few years ago, it wasn't really possible to transform this onto headphones or you would have to have a dozens of loudspeakers inside of your room. And uh, mm. you can guess not everybody has that. Uh, so right now um, we have this, this immersive audio buzzword going on but to keep it simple, it really makes uh, it, it tells that it's now possible to have 3D audio on headphones. And it's, it, I would say it changes everything. <laughs> if it does, uh, you will find out in this in this presentation. Um, so uh, this, this is just like a brief introduction. And then you immediately jump. Uh, you hear words like Dolby Atmos, which is just a tiny bit of the whole 3D audio world. This is, you know, it probably from the cinema where you literally have uh, loudspeakers everywhere in the front, in the back, now at the top. And to give you the feeling of sitting inside of the of the movie and to be more immersive there, we have the word again. And it works. 
But this is just a tiny bit of what you can do with spatial audio and what we can do is what you're going to find out. I hope this quickly answers your question. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, to uh, to explore that a little bit further. So, for example, I've got a, a surround sound system um, mm. for all of my like entertainment, TV, whatever. Um, so it's a 5.1 system. When it comes to spatial audio, is that going beyond that? Or is it creating to optimize for those 5.1 speakers? Ooh, where do we start? Um, as you can guess, with 5.1, you'd need at least six loudspeakers and with 3d audio adding like a height layer that you have sound from the top you need additional loudspeakers and this is where it gets kind of inconvenient and now we do it a bit the other way around and have it trying to put everything into one system and this is what sound bars do they create like virtual loudspeakers inside of your room and then make use of the full room so you then just don't have like individual loudspeakers but the feeling of the spherical sound and this is where it, as you can guess is it's yeah it's better since you you're yeah making use of more than just a few speakers um but for 3D audio, I'm more hooked on the headphone part. And since everybody has headphones at home, you can now experience this feeling of three-dimensional sound uh, at home. And there are many mm. ways to do that. And then we also have stuff like head tracking, where the sound even moves with your, with your uh, physical uh, head rotation. And this is where it gets super interesting. Yeah, so it definitely becomes so much more accessible, I guess. Um, do we have to have specific types of headphones? Um, I would say not really. I prefer over ears headphone because then the sound is physically also coming from the outside. It, and within ears, you put it in your ear canal and then you lose a bit of this feeling that, it, yeah, basically what your ears do is adding like some sort of filtering and um, changing the frequency response. For example, sound that is coming from the front sounds different than sound coming from behind because our ears are formed that way. And within ear headphones, you kind of lose a bit of the effect but i know that like even distinguishing left and right already works like with even cheap pair of headphones um oh that was weird my microphone just cut out for me a second hopefully that still works um yes. yeah so that is uh that's interesting i'm wondering if i should switch to over ears i've got some in-ear monitors in uh they've got pretty good drivers in them but we'll, <laughs> we'll see how we go um and uh, yeah i'm i think uh, we're all keen to to hear where we're going to go with this. Yeah, you, you, you should. Um, maybe, yeah, let's go back to, to what I prepared. Um, I, we kind of already jumped into it, so let's let's just scrap the introduction. <laughs> As you can guess, I'm doing spatial audio all the time, and this is this is uh, all you need to know right now. Um, I really like to do the recording and the post-production because with such a new technology, it makes sense to think of the whole image and mm. really start before the story this is i can already tell like with what i have with dolby atmos they just just threw sound onto a uh, film that's already done so the sound doesn't really change the experience it makes it better of course but with spatial audio you have so much more potential like you can change how people experience for example we are when they change their head or with um this new head tracking technology you can yeah mess around with the people but it sh should support the story so it doesn't mm. really make sense to just use spatial audio because you have a hype buzzword you really need to think, oh, what do I do creatively with it? And this yeah. is what I really love to do. And this is why I talk about it all the time, but figured, oh, people should really hear what I hear. And then it makes sense for them. Um, I'm, so we I'm so glad you uh, you touched on that, actually, because the the recording aspect of things is so is so important to, to get it right, first of all, but to, to design it. And I think this is where there could be some some issues with spatial audio where things have been done retrospectively and it may give a poor, like a worse experience. And then people think, ah, oh, spatial audio is not for me. I don't like it. But it's because it wasn't recorded correctly. So you tackling all aspects of the recording and the production and, you know, everything that happens in the delivery of it, that must mean that you've, well, your ears have experienced all sorts of things. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. And... I mean, I started a lot with VR and VR is still great, but then there's also AR and 
I don't know, movie for cinema or I'm doing like a theater experience where people are moving around wearing headphones. So there are so many use cases and so many fun things you can do. Um, but you have to make sure that, yeah, to unleash the full potential, I say, you have to go to go through all the steps. And as you say, if somebody messes up your recording or you yourself messes up the recording, maybe it won't be as good as, as, as you would love it to be. Mm. I'm sure a lot of people ask you, but what, what do you enjoy more, recording spatial audio <laughs> or editing and, and working with the, the post-production? Um, I really like to do um, everything. I mean, I, I, I couldn't imagine myself just doing the recording as well as just sitting in the studio all the time. I like to travel, and mm -hmm. uh, but also like to be in the studio and don't talk to anybody for a week or something. And it really made sense for this niche because, as you can, as you know, from feature films, you have sound departments where there's really somebody just doing the recording with an assistant, and then there's there's somebody just doing the sound editing and stuff. And I mean, I like all of it, and I don't want to do just one of it. But it doesn't really make sense as a business model because I you can't do the sound for a feature film all by yourself but for the projects i do where we have um, a duration of i don't know a few minutes to 10 50 minutes maximum this is where i can say oh i can really take care of the whole sound process um, and i really like to go even before recording talk about sound how we can use it mm. yeah sound is just I mean, it's one of my favorite aspects of filmmaking. Uh, I've always been so keen to to get good audio and just really master it. And it's the thing that I've probably learned more about. Um, and it's probably the thing that's also most overlooked for a lot of people when it comes to video. Um, but it makes up so much of video. So, yeah. As you can tell, we're, we're all excited about audio here. <laughs> Very good. And I mean, I get that people have trouble with sound because it's so abstract i mean you literally can't see it right but you need some years of experience to really get oh i have this noise but is it good or bad like what what, what does it mean and for visuals mm. it's a bit more obvious if you have i don't know oversaturated or a, a too bright image or too dark you can get that but with sound oh it's 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 loud or it's quiet it's it's there but i don't really know what what that means and this is why i try to really break down so, okay what's in for you like how can you use that and maybe tell what's good sound what's bad sound and um maybe let's just jump um we we already talked quite a lot about spatial audio let's maybe get a bit more practical what do we already have here right you as you mentioned we have dolby atmos in the cinema and it's nice i really don't want to talk bad about it it's fun going to the cinema and having a huge soundtrack and epic sound effects and that's totally cool but this is just as mentioned a tiny bit of what you can do um there was recently maybe you heard that apple is pushing really hard into the topic of spatial audio and not only can you now experience a movie-like ex experience with uh, AirPods Pro, for example, watching films. Uh, you can now also experience music spatially. And then we have, again, Dolby Atmos. And it's fun because Dolby Atmos, it's not even a technology. It's more like a marketing term. I mean, yep. it, under the hood, there's so much more happening and, and, and don't bother it. But it's more like, oh, Dolby. people see Dolby Atmos and think, oh, this must be great. And for music, I'm a bit skeptical because what they did is really remix a thousand songs f from the stereo stems and like they had all the recordings and um, mix them in Dolby Atmos and create like a three-dimensional experience where you have sound from all directions and I did like a listening test and I feel like most of the songs sound worse than the stereo and this is certainly not what we want but still there's this marketing oh experience music like never before but that's not how it works <laughs> so that, it that really... must be uh must be really frustrating for someone in your position where because i've i felt the same and even the playlists that they're they're promoting to push um spatial audio they don't necessarily sound the best and i know there is good examples out there but the ones that are being chosen to promote it surely that puts you in a difficult position because you know what you're doing with this and then you see poor examples being pushed by giants such as apple yeah. and that's that's tricky because then you're just having an uphill battle right it, it is. And I mean, you have major labels, major artists who approve the mix. So it's not like 
like somebody did the job. It was like the huge studios who do the stereo. But to make it short, how can they be experienced with 3D audio when it's just out there for a few years? And mm. it will be better in the future. And you are right. There are good examples of 3D audio. But right now, it's a wild <laughs> field. And I see music as maybe the you have the, the most possibilities to mess around with guitars flying around your head. But it's it's the wildest field since you don't know, oh, but does it make sense? Like, does it sound better or is stereo just fine? And I would say with music, stereo is not broken. I mean, it, it it's cool. It, it, it works. Mm. And we're used to experience uh, music in stereo. But hey, let's see what happens in the future. And there are good examples. And those good examples are better than a stereo. And this is where it gets mm. interesting. But we are not quite there yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> but they, there has already been like a, a really big music hype, and maybe you've heard about 8D audio. And just look it up on YouTube, and uh, the sound engineers go crazy. They were like, like, why would you do that? Because somebody had the idea to run music through a spatializer and run it around your head, and since the technology is so advanced people really had the feeling of 3d audio because it sounded like there was like literally music circling in your living room and you forgot you're wearing headphones which is called mm. externalization and this is the 3d audio i'm always talking about you you forget you're wearing headphones because music is have uh, is, is happening inside of your head but we are used to experiencing audio outside of your head because we don't really have music in our head right it's yeah. all coming from 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 uh from outside and this is what 8d did good in a way because it showed that like 100 millions of people really want to experience 3d audio but circling music around the head is certainly not the way so we are somewhere in between the Dolby atmos uh, pushing the topic hard and trying to doing it right and then there's 8d like doing it very weird but reaching more people and the sweet spot i would say is somewhere in between to see oh why does 8d work and why is it exciting for people and then how can we do our classical workflows where we have like a punchy nice soundtrack and not just like a weird externalization yeah. around our head so this is where we are at the moment with music i guess mm. Yeah, it's uh, it's all it's all very interesting and and moving fast. And there's actually um, a message here in the chat saying, "Wouldn't it be the first time I come across companies asking for a decade of experience in a system that's only a couple of years old." <laughs> you know, yeah. that's so true. Story it's, uh, of our life. <laughs> yeah, things do move sometimes a little too fast. Um, but you know, we wouldn't get to those uh, later areas if we didn't have people like yourself explaining it from the from the bare bones, from the roots of it. Um, and going through the, the details in greater depth. Yeah, and this is why I really try to do as many projects that are as diverse as possible. I'm doing like something in the automotive industry, then I'm doing like artsy, creative theater experiences to be, to really understand like how can sound be there used in a good way. And with 3D audio, it's, it's like another layer of uh, difficulty. Um, but the example of 8D audio really was good for me. I mean, our audio engineer hated it because it, it was, oh, you can't do that, uh, which is sort of true. But in the end, it just showed that people are ready now for 3D audio. And like, this mm. was good for me. So I'm not even mad of uh, Apple maybe being too early with the music thing. But what I already mentioned that you can watch um, with spatial audio, um, uh, a movie with, for example, um, Disney Plus, and it works very good. Like I was surprised how well it works. You really had the feeling of sitting in a cinema, and you moved mm. your head, and the sound was uh, uh, like the, the the voice was always coming from your phone, and you moved your head, and it's like literally f like the cinema. And this is where it makes fun. So, yeah. long story short, it depends on the content, how you can use spatial audio, and where it even does make sense. Mm. Yeah, I, I need to uh, I need to give that a go. Uh, okay, I think there is a there's a lot of chat about headphones and uh, people plugged in, people ready. Um, let's uh, yeah, hopefully hear some stuff. Very good. Yeah, maybe let's just make it short. There's like AR gaming. That's that's a thing, you know. There are so many ways. Not only films. Just just try to think outside the box, and I'm sure you will find a very cool use case. 
Um, for Sound of the Future, just to make it short, it, it will be big. Otherwise, I wouldn't be doing that. And yep. the reason is fairly simple. As I mentioned, we're used to experience sound, sound in a three-dimensional way. And stereo is just like a... How do you say a, a, a face in between? Like it will all be three dimensional in the future. And now we are finally at the step where this is technically possible. It's there are still like some barriers and um, like like formats or how do you record that and how do you get it to the people? But this is literally happening right now. So um, stay tuned for the future. It will be pretty nice. Um, so let's get more. Uh, into into the basic um so I, oh this is supposed to say loudspeakers <laughs> you have <laughs> the 3d audio playback on loudspeakers but also on headphones and as mentioned loudspeakers are cool but you usually don't have as many loudspeakers so let's experience 3d audio on headphones and people are always freaking out so how can you experience 3d audio you would think oh with 5.1 you need like six channels and with 3d you need more channels but forget about all those channel and make it complicated because we literally only have two ears so if you do the math right you can end up creating sound that works only on headphones and this is what we are going to do right now so um i am supposed to change to my oops to my video player and if you don't have any questions i will just fire uh, a video I did, uh, which has 3D audio, and um, yeah, last yeah, time that's... I accidentally played it on mono, but I'm thinking <laughs> of doing that again so that you know, like, how does normal sound like and how does uh, stereo sound like. Maybe for the, the first 10 seconds I do this on, on purpose, but it will make sense for you, because this mm -hmm. is how normal films sound like. Okay. nice you have sound but it's not like coming from from anywhere so let's just start again and go here I feel like you get used to the feeling of having it three-dimensional like very quick so let's maybe jump into this one scene where you have um here a uh, sound coming from the right for example you I, I hope it worked for you right prove me wrong i, I think <laughs> but, i think it did it i mean it's uh it's one of those things where because it is so natural to what we normally hear sometimes you have to remind yourself that it's not normally like that when you film things so i think showing the the mono originally was definitely a, a good example because it just reminds you that oh yeah things do have a flat plane when you film uh, exactly. otherwise so yeah maybe you, uh, you do feel the the room kind of coming around you a little bit yeah maybe just once more time uh, one more time um like the scene as said you're in the in the in the floor and then there's music music coming from the right you turn your head and then you have the music uh, mm. around you now this is mono so this is like the normal and if we switch it back this is how it's supposed to sound all right yeah so yeah. something like that um, but how do you even do that and um now we're going to to talk a bit about uh, like the recording what what like what did I use to record this and somebody had the great idea to to use something called a dummy head and it has two microphones inside of the ears which is where our eardrums are located right um, so it really 
copies basically what we are hearing and you can record it with a normal microphone. And the other way is to use those fancy upcoming plugins which create like a virtual acoustic environment. So you have like a, a audio ob object and this is your listener, this is your head and you can move the object around and we're gonna do that later in Premiere. And then it renders in real time, how would it sound for a human head? And this takes into account like what is called HRTF and this is like the most complicated slide and then <laughs> we go back to, to how does it even sound like. And it's fairly simple how our brain knows something is 3D audio. And if there is a car coming from the right, uh, the sound uh, comes to our right ear before it comes to our left ear because our right ear is ne nearer to the car than our left ear. Makes total sense, right? Then there's also the time difference, um, which is what I just said. But there's also the, uh, the intensity difference because if it's coming from the right, um, it's louder on the right than it is on the left, right? And then we have what I already mentioned with our ears, that sounds coming from the front sound different than coming from the back. And this is what we have learned all our life. And everybody has like a bit different um, uh, ear, like, like a difference and uh, a filtering curve, but it works for most of the people that you can apply like this frequency curve to give people the feeling of, oh, it's coming from the back and not from the front. But this is still one of the challenges. It doesn't work for everybody. Usually we you use like a generic uh, calculation, but in the future it will be personalized. And this is where also 3D audio could take off. But long story short, left and right, as you saw from the video works very good, but back and front, difficult, top and bottom, also difficult. Um, but everything else, like making people, uh, giving people the feeling of sound coming from the outside is already working. I love how the uh, the model that you used uh, with the microphones in the ears, how it you know it resembles an actual head because surely the shape of the head also has some characteristics in the way that audio travels, right? Exactly. And people say you also would have needed like the shoulders because we have sound reflecting from our shoulders mm. coming to our ears. And this is apparently important to localize sounds above above 3K, which are birds. So basically our shoulders are responsible for our brain thinking birds are always coming from the top. Oh, wow. So <laughs> it's like a primal instinct. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, turns out, as you can guess, I have such a microphone here. My microphone is a little bit, how do you say? It's a bit wilder because as you can tell, it doesn't only have two ears, it has eight ears. And don't think too much about it because this has <laughs> a, a VR reasons. And for what we are doing right now, we are only using two ears. So you're literally just listening to the two ears and it will sound like you are standing here. And the reason it has eight ears is because a dummy head can only watch into one direction, right? But what if you want to change the viewer perspective and then somebody had the idea, oh, I will build a dummy head which looks into four directions at the same time. And then <laughs> in the post-production, you can interpolate between uh, uh, those recordings. So this is, this is the reason, but don't worry about it. Usually you just need two ears and how it just sounds like I will show you. All right, now it should sound like you are standing here inside of my studio and watching into this direction. So I should now be coming from the, oh God, no, I'm from the, this is, see, I have to, uh, <laughs> to switch it. Now I'm from the right, right? Yeah. And <laughs> um, now I can move around the head and now I'm from the other side and oh, get rid of the microphone here. I and think we might be have... having a little bit of a, a cackling uh, ah, okay. on the, the zoom end. It's, it is working. I'm here in the spatial, but there's, there's definitely like a, a high sort of compression that's and possibly I happening. I know why this is. Let me just switch something back and forth. <laughs> and end my uh, presentation. Hold on. Audio tech is always the, uh, the best when it comes to technical difficulties because you can't see it. 
So you have to work out where it's coming from. And w what is happening, but it should hopefully now be gone. Is it? Is yep. it oh, okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> I have to switch something on and off and then it's working like everything. Yeah. Um, all right. Now you probably got used to the feeling of, uh, I don't know, me being here with you. If you close your eyes, you will have the feeling of me. Yeah. Being close to you. And. Oh, I think we might be having the wrong microphone selected. <laughs> oh God. This is, this is live, <laughs> but this is, this is live. This is the best though. Um, this oh, is how we troubleshoot. Oh, I know. I know why. Yeah. Thanks. Now it's working. Um, should be right. Tim. Okay. Yep. Yeah. This is the thing with doing fancy examples, uh, live. Something is always messing in the back and you don't know what it is, but now, okay. Finally, we have 3d audio inside of the studio and I think, oh God, I'm so, so confused. Um, but if we switch back to this microphone, then it will promise me, hopefully totally make sense. And now I'm just again, a random voice inside of your head which is super weird for our brain and if i i think i really had it the, the, the wrong way this is oh there we have it so i guess the the best way to sort of describe what we're <laughs> experiencing here is when you switch to your um is that a condenser mic or is it a dynamic one that you had previously this one yeah yeah this is uh the, the one i was using all the time yeah anyway when you're using that one what we're experiencing is just voice like it's it's just voice everywhere Whereas when you go to the other one, it, it has a bit more distance to it and there's a bit more sort of room. Uh, exactly. I mean, I can also like g go away from this microphone, but I will still be a voice inside your head. It, does, it doesn't give you any feeling of distance or even presence. And now since we figured it out, <laughs> I can now switch back. And now it should, uh, uh, <laughs> you should have the feeling of uh, watching into this direction and now we can finally do the fun things oh god this is um <laughs> why, why why i like this so much um and this is what i got like from from a holiday in the uk i don't know like maybe 15 years ago and now i have um the perfect use case for it i'm not sure if you know what it is but it sounds like ah come on do your thing ah there we have it and if we switch back to the other microphone it sounds way less exciting way less exciting it's just like <laughs> ah, it's <laughs> all right but you, you you get you get the idea hopefully let let's let's yeah. ask the chat if if you are now super confused all you got it oh right this is this is what a 3d audio does I, I'm just going to add in that I think um, we should also bear in mind that with the fact that we're doing this as a live stream and there's a, a video call happening in between, quality will uh, will be different. So you're having the best of fun in your studio, playing around with your Weeble Wobble. Was that what they? No, what are these things called? I, think I can't remember I what they Googled it. It's grown uh, tube or something. <laughs> grown tube. Okay. Yeah. Um, Wait, so yeah, sure. the uh, the difference that you're you're having uh, is probably vast, but we can we can get uh, the idea of of what is happening. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, it's an interesting thing with um, with working on such a, a remote sort of uh, idea of stuff because like I said, the experience that you've got, um, you don't know what we're having. Likewise, you don't know what headphones we're using, what other things. So that is probably one of my biggest questions when it comes to uh, doing spatial audio is how do you how do you recognize or sit with the fact that not everyone's going to have the best listening experience? Like where do you position yourself? Do you are you okay with that? Or I mean, yeah. and of course not, but <laughs> this is just the reality and I can't argue with that. I mean, since I've been working in the VR field, like I said, for years, we have the same problem all the time that you send a, a video or like a, like an app uh, to a client and you don't know what's going on, but it doesn't work for some reason, although you give like a description and you know it should work, but sometimes it just doesn't. And then you have to figure out, okay, what's what's going on in, in the process. So I'm already happy if people are 
um, wearing headphones and like getting the idea. I, I really would love to have everything uncompressed and as as high resolution as possible, but this is just not the reality. Um, so I'm I'm I hope it just works. And if not, yeah. you can check for yourself and, and get excited. At Google 3D audio, watch videos on YouTube. Uh, and then experience for yourself and then at least it, it should work and if not mm. um yeah i can't help you <laughs> there is actually there's a uh i think it is on the dolby atmos uh they're obviously heavy on the the marketing of this uh they have a yeah. great demonstration that works with uh was worked with all headphones that i've tried mm. and it plays a music uh, as a piece that's got i mean i'm gonna hazard a guess maybe 30 different instruments happening mm -hmm. um and you can instantly toggle between uh, I think it goes mono, stereo, and then 3D space. Um, and you can just experience those. And the the moment you click onto spatial audio, and obviously this has been recorded correctly and it's been mastered correctly, it is incredible. It, suddenly the sound, it changes from being a sound here to being a sound around. And so much of that is likely done in, at the time of recording uh, using dedicated microphones and other things. And... I mean, that in itself, microphones, they get expensive by standard. I dread to think how much a microphone like your 3D one with eight mics is. is that's, that's quite a pricey investment, right? <laughs> uh, well, yes, but uh, it, it's, it's usually when you invest into stuff, you now use it and think of, oh, how could I use it? And then this is immediately where you pop up with ideas and, oh, I have this project. Maybe I could use this microphone here. So in the end, the if uh, the, the money was well spent. And I mean, I wanted to have this mic for for years because it just sound it, it looks it looks already weird mm -hmm. and this is half <laughs> of the experience right uh already oh making people excited what is that and how does it sound like and then people automatically will get oh this is this is what it does yeah um, that's a, a a great way of justifying uh purchases <laughs> of finding how can i use this it's the same way that i i think of like cameras and things so you know, the, it's not necessarily about the camera, but when you do get a new camera, it gets you excited and it makes you want to use it more. And by using it more, you get better and you improve and, um, you know, you just end up getting more experience with it and, and other things. So sometimes new gear has a, a big bonus and it's not just the fact that it's new. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I really like that you mentioned like this example. Um, it, it really is a challenge to get 3D audio to the people and make sure it works. I mean, sometimes you're using the wrong browser or, uh, I don't know, the headphones uh, the other way around and then our brain thinks something is off. And what I can recommend is just, I don't know, do do listen to it try to 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 get this, this to do this difference from mono uh, like there are, um like some there's some gear you can you can you can just flip a switch and then it will make sense but the, the problem of 3d audio is that it's so natural that we get used to it very quick mm. and if uh, like for my content pieces i do i try it i sometimes just put something in mono inside so that people have this this difference and get oh this back, is how, yeah. this is normally how sound sounds like and then you put your headphones on again mm -hmm. and then you have this 3d feeling and this is like one mm. of the tricks you can do to keep people excited because yeah after a few minutes even watching a film on dolby atmos it, it must be like a helicopter flying to the top to be so obvious that you know oh yeah right i'm in the cinema but yep. then you get so used to it and oh i have, I have like this nice ambience of the forest and it just feels natural this is like mm -hmm. how to say curse and 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 heaven or how do you say um, yeah for that <laughs> so so how do we uh start to implement spatial audio into video editing like how how would someone start to do that assuming that you've recorded it and you've got you know at least stereo recording and other multiple recording how do you work with it in something like premiere yeah the easiest way is what i just showed you to bake everything into a what's called binaural stereo which is basically a two channel file so it's stereo but you have all the 3d information from the microphone for example which was captured or from the spatializer so this is the easiest way and this was like one of the reasons i used binaural stereo with a with a plain normal video which works on every video platform because right now uh, everything supports stereo at least 
but you can get of course more fancy and think of for example 360 videos and they use something called MB Sonics and even MB Sonics is already supported by Premiere for example where you can where you have a multi-channel file it's it has four channels and it has um, not like 5.1 like specific uh, locations of the sound it's based on like a spherical sound and this is where it gets very complicated but in the four channels, you have X, Y, and Z, uh, Z axis. And uh, then there's an additional channel which can, which has all the information of um, of the 3D audio and that you have a sphere, basically. And you can already work with that in Premiere and upload it to YouTube, for example. Because five years ago, you, YouTube said, oh, we want to have spatial audio with 360 videos. And they supported it. And now we, <laughs> we still can use that, which is great. Wow. And Facebook uh, did the same thing. So this mm -hmm. would also be a possibility to distri distribute um, spatial audio for social media, for instance. Mm. So there are quite a lot of possibilities, but as you can tell, it gets very technical and oh, there's like one format for one platform and another format for the other platform. And if you want to do sound for cinema, you have to, <laughs> to, to, to use Dolby Atmos, for example. Um, but usually you can work with most of it, I even in the editing software. Okay, interesting. Um, so it seems as though video was actually the, the driving force for this rather than a primarily audio first um, experience. Ooh. Oh, it triggered. Um, <laughs> but you, you are right in the sense of that I know that sound works best if you add visuals, which sounds weird, but it really helps our ears to understand what's happening. And this is, for example, in the video you saw, I'm using um a rotations like crazy which you wouldn't normally do but since it's all in the first person um it really helps the people to understand oh there's like this printer uh, on the right and then you move the camera and then it's it's on the left for example you help the ears to hear it mm -hmm. which is just how our brain works because you, you have multiple layers of um perceiving your surroundings and the most important probably is the visual and the audio aspect mm -hmm. uh, forget about smell and everything but in the end it 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 comes to your brain all the layers and it tries to 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 check the layers and if the sound doesn't match the visuals or the visuals doesn't match the sound uh, you have a problem but mm. if the layers all work together per perfectly fine they can support each other and this is where we have immersion again <laughs> yeah yeah, it's uh, it's amazing how how easily our brain can tell us if something isn't quite right. You know, if, if something doesn't quite sound right, instead of it feeling natural and just a little bit of an error, it's a jarring experience of, you know, this is wrong. In the same way of, again, to bring it back to visuals and uh, editing, if you are color grading and uh, editing photos and you get the skin tones wrong, our brains are so naturally in tune with it that it just something's off, something doesn't quite look right. Yeah, I've I've not much uh, to add there. I guess for <laughs> for the for the for the visual part, it can be probably even more difficult. I would say if you have like a recording done with your phone and you play it back, most people are already happy with what they hear. Um, but it's like a narrow degree of oh, this is this is going through and oh, this is so off. So <laughs> mm. yeah, are we uh, are we able to see how uh, how it can look in Premiere? Yes, we can do that. All right, let's double check all the checkboxes <laughs> that uh, need to be um, used. Okay, uh, sound, yes, stereo, video. Okay, you are now seeing just my desktop, but now you have Premiere. And this is, uh, yeah, the project you just saw. Um, yeah, this is the end, I haven't, uh, I didn't show you yet. And yeah, this is Premiere, basically. I guess you know it uh, even better than uh, than I do. And the, the main difference uh, between probably uh, your projects is that I only have like, I don't know, two video layers and then maybe so just like some, some grading uh, going on. Uh, but then we have like 20 <laughs> soundtracks of yeah. 15. Uh, <laughs> so welcome to my world. But uh, since the project was like very sound heavy, as you know, it's yeah, it, it made sense to end up there somewhere. All right. So, um, where many, many start? clips. 
Yes, I have. Um, this is like the final mix. Um, as you know, you end up with the final mix <laughs> somewhere. But then we still have the individual clips and I can show you uh, how different uh, they sound like. And maybe let's just play back um, this little part, which is the final mix, so that you know what 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 it sounded like in the in the in the final piece. Oh, I don't think that's playing through smooth for us, unfortunately. Yes, I think we can we can forget about the, the video clip optimization, but as long as the uh, the sound is playing smooth. I hope you don't mind that. Uh, we could potentially just turn off the uh, the visual entirely. Yeah, we can do that. And this saves <laughs> some memory space, go. which is great. All right. So um, let's just... Now you heard the final mix. It was, yeah, nice with music and, and everything. But how did the sound sound like at the beginning? And I'm gonna going to play back this thing which is just a boom microphone this is why it's called the boom mm -hmm. and this is how it sounds like well yeah uh, it, it 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 is it has sound but it's not very exciting and if i play yeah. back, the dummy head this is how this is how it sounds like I hope this worked for you. Yeah, as mentioned, that's... you have to have wired headphones because, as mentioned, with Bluetooth headphones, it sometimes does something wrong with it. But I hope uh, you got the feeling of, oh, there's um, this huge can on the left. <laughs> it's just got it's just got so much more depth to it. Like you could hear as if you know if something dropped, it's it's coming closer to you or it's going further away. It uh, it is very subtle, but. Again, it's like you mentioned, it's something you could get used to very easily because it's what we're naturally used to hearing. Um, but as soon as you switch back to the original, you would realize like, oh, that actually just sounds very flat. And as much as you can get a good quality recording, having that extra depth just opens up so much more possibility. Yeah, exactly. Um, now we already uh, we have this weird uh, orange looking <laughs> track, which is you can guess it. It's a metronome. And since the whole the whole um, visual was cut to a beat, and all the sounds should make sense uh, with that beat, um, I just got a, a, a metronome and uh, decided for a tempo that was sort of uplifting, um, but not too exciting, so that I don't have to make as many edits. And if that's interesting, interesting I've never you... seen a technique of uh, dropping in a metronome audio clip, but it makes perfect sense. Yeah, and I didn't really listen to it. I mean, this is how it sounds like. Right, it's a metronome, but I basically used it just for the for the waveform so that I know mm -hmm. oh, where to edit. And as you can see, um, yeah, it sort of matches. Here we have like the perfect match. This is on the one. So we always have one, two, uh, one, two, three, four. And the one is always like this huge uh peak and then you have this minor peak which is the three which is the snare and then in be in between we have like um this hi hat so i know oh this is two and four and this is yeah i'm i'm like a very structured person <laughs> and i like to um uh, uh yeah to also have yeah have the visuals supporting it and if you i can play back um everything with the metronome this is how it sounds like it sounds a bit odd. It sounds like music from a video game. Yeah. It's like a Crash Bandicoot level. <laughs> so uh, this is, yeah, I wouldn't have left it that way. So this is why I, ad uh, I added the, the music, which is this. Yeah. And then it all starts to make sense. I mean, you, you, it, it's fun to have like this clink clong <laughs> sounds going on all the time, uh, but this is what this is not what the people expect. They expect like some music to have it driven emotionally, and this is where I know okay, there has mm -hmm. to be music at some point in the video. So for your question, how can we use uh, spatial audio 
inside of Premiere, I prepared one of the tracks. Let me check which is it. <laughs> I think it's this one. Uh, there's a there's mentions here in the chat of uh, interesting workflow and uh, definitely must be useful uh, having the clip track. It's um it's opposite to how a lot of video editors would work. Um, obviously, you're focusing on the audio, so first and foremost, audio is your your primary uh, sort of focus on things. Mm -hmm. But to to work to a metronome and then find some music to add to it is quite an interesting workflow. For me, I would have probably found some music, um, had you know a rough idea of the narrative, and then pieced some of the the audio in between uh, to you know, sound with the music and also where the music has space, that's where you can have the sound effects working and other things. Um, but this just seems far more rhythmic and yeah, it, it works. I love it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Uh, it's luckily I did, that was not the first time I did it. So I knew like what to focus on. And since this is like a sound, ba a sound first video, uh, this is, yeah, why I approached it that way. Mm. Um, the only problem with it, as you can guess, as soon as you want to change like the tempo or the client says, oh, I don't like the music. Can you put something quicker? Everything falls apart <laughs> mm. because as soon as you change like one thing, all everything that's behind it just, yeah, is, is, yeah. is for the trash can. So this is like maybe one of the of the of the cons. <laughs> yeah. Although to some extent, if you've so you're matching up with a specific beat, so say this is, you know, a classic uh, like electronic dance track of like 128 beats per minute. Mm -hmm. then you could find other music that match the same BPM, although the, the melody might change or whatever. The fact that you've done your audio to a click rather than to the melody probably gives you a little bit more flexibility. But if they say, oh, can we change this to classical 96 BPM or something else, then you think, ah, now it's all gone wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is why I like to use a metronome, because as you say, you can throw like most of the genres onto it. And this is what I did for the project um, to get like five uh, tunes from, I don't know, Audio Jungle or your favorite music <laughs> licensing <laughs> platform. And I uh, had like five examples, uh, which were all the same tempo. So I wouldn't have to, to change anything. And um, of course I adjusted a little bit and I already, I also got the stems. So like the individual instruments uh, from, the, from the composer, which was great because sometimes I just needed the bass or like just the drums to, to get like some drive into it. But sometimes the melody was a bit too much maybe, or um, yeah, not, not really matching to what's happening in the individuals. Um, mm. So yeah, I can recommend asking for individual instruments. <laughs> And so if we wanted to change the positioning of the audio, how does that look for Premiere? Uh, you mean like changing something from the left to the right or what? Do you yeah, mean? or where you had the, the heads sort of space where you could say, okay, this is a sound that comes from here. We're using this part of the microphone. Oh yeah, I can show that. So let, I think, let me just play back. Yes, that's the right sound. So this is basically a, uh, this huge can where they um, make liquor. And now I'm going to use a third party plugin, which is called Dear VR Pro. And uh, let's see if it works, because as you know, it's it's not very it's not made for for Premiere because it's an audio plugin. But with VST, you can use it. And there we have it. And this is uh, the familiar looking plugin that I just showed you. And what Dear VR does is creating this virtual space um, that uh, here's our listener and here's our audio object and now we can change the object coming from the right or coming from the left and then so this we can is like also... a top-down view of someone's head exactly and yeah. i just wanted there we can change it there we have it from the side mm -hmm. and there is uh, from the back and this okay. is from the top yeah so you you guessed it right so it's as you can tell it's like with working with 3d it's always difficult to have like the right projection it's the same when you model with 3d like oh how am i even looking at anything yeah <laughs> this is the same problem i have but i like to have it uh, from the top uh, down so um yeah because left and right is is the most important uh, thing now um i can select like a virtual acoustic and now we have a dozens of presets which work very nice. And I think since this was some sort of a, uh, like like a bathroom type of uh, room, let me just add this. 
and put it to the right and now it should be coming from the right. There we have it. And if I put it to the left, it should be coming from the left. Yeah, and if we crank up uh, the reflection or the reverb, uh, we can really position it where we want, maybe at some distance. Yeah, and then we could also go and automate um, it with keyframes, like coming from the right and then going to the left. Um, since this is just a one shot, it doesn't really make sense. But as you can tell, uh, it, it's, it's then yeah being automated and this and you is can pan what, around yeah yeah this is what helped me so much to preview how would it sound like uh with 3d with without jumping into my editing software i could just do it uh, inside the video editing which was very helpful so yeah mm -hmm. this is how you can so, work with just thinking audio. if you were say you were recording um uh like cars for example in in high-end movies a lot of the time the car isn't moving it's in a studio and they've maybe put it on um like rolling floors so the wheels are going but the actual car isn't moving you could record the car sound but you're not going to get any of that natural panning um and this i guess is how you could have that same quality the microphone is always the same distance from the sound it's always going to be the same quality and then you can use keyframes to add in that spatial aspect and likewise change it if the director says oh actually we want the car going the other way we can do that Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is, I think, all I can show you uh, for now. So if you have any questions, um, feel free. Yeah, it's um, it's definitely very interesting. Uh, it's it just shows the power of um, the way that tech is moving forward and how we can like focus on certain things and then focus even more on the greater depth of those uh, specific things. Um, I'm definitely excited to to see how spatial audio grows. I think there's, as you mentioned, there is a lot of room for it to grow, and and maybe on on the music side of things, it's uh, happening a bit rapidly. Um, but for for cinema and and for filmmaking, uh, there's a lot that's already existed and and been there. Um, if you could recommend how someone may want to get involved with this and push it further for themselves, what would be your your best sort of beginner tip? Okay, um, it really depends if you are a filmmaker or like doing 3D modeling or why VFX, for example. And uh, spoiler alarm, I have also like a dedicated blog where I write about stuff. And what I did is, since I'm focusing on a content, <clears throat> I did an, an overview how you can use 3D audio. And films is just like one little thing you can do with 3D audio, but you can also do radio dramas. You can use it for VR and everything I already mentioned so far. Um, so maybe check it out. And I also have like listening demos so that you can hear it and get like, what does it mean? <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's actually a question here from Angus, uh, which is actually a very interesting question. Um, can you adjust the settings to accommodate or simulate people with harder hearing issues? And I'm going to stick that a step further and just, you know, for all other accessibility, are you able to simulate areas that you personally have no experience with or yeah, like uh, what opportunity do you have there? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I'm not sure if you know the word hearables, probably, maybe. It's like the, you know, variables, which is like a smartwatch, but now we have hearables, which are, which is a term for this in-ear sort of earbuds we have. But hearables describes it a bit better because those are not just headphones, whoops, and those are smart headphones. And what they are doing right now is basically disrupting the whole hearing aid industry because those smart little headphones can do way more than any listening device because mm. you cannot only, yeah, listening to music, you can also adjust how the, the environment sounds for you. And regarding 3D audio, um, it will all be called object-based audio, which means that you have this individual 3D audio objects uh, implemented into the MPEG-H, which is what it's called, or even like the Dolby Atmos. It doesn't render anything to loudspeakers. It renders, it gives 
this objects just like i showed you um three-dimensional information so that you know oh this is uh, this object is placed here this object is placed here and then it all gets rendered in real time for your ears but as you know everybody has different sort of ears and this is where we can add the personalization and in the personalization you cannot only add like your favorite or anything you can also add maybe make frequencies louder that you prefer mm. or add like of course, obviously, bass uh, boost the bass, but you can get like very deep and add your listening curve if you have any hearing problems, and then try to, yeah, make them no more. <laughs> Amazing! So you could EQ your friend's voice, and you know, change them, make them pitch perfect. <laughs> For example, or imagine you are you are watching TV, and and grandma has uh, hearing aids she would have a separate stream with with the mpeg age and she could adjust for example even the music or a, like the voiceover because you have mm. all audio objects you that you can change and then maybe for grandma or grandpa it's it, the music is always so loud right so you can lower the volume for the music for her but for everybody else in the room it will still be the same uh, experience so personalization will really be a thing in the future and then we have also this very good side effect of inclusion yeah that is that is incredible that is just opening my ears to all sorts of <laughs> ideas on things um yeah i mean the the future of tech and the the way that things are continually getting smaller and smaller and more personable but also just so much more open for everyone um that's just a brilliant thing uh so thank you thank you very much um for joining us today martin and uh, all of your details on spatial audio and your uh blog is a whole wealth of information and other things you uh, are really pushing uh, the voice and the excitement of 3D audio. Uh, so thank you for joining us today. Thanks for everyone who's uh, joined in the chat. And uh, if you have any closing words, then uh, yeah, go ahead. Thank you. I, I, I don't really have, but um, yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for asking the question that it, it, it questions. It really helps me to understand like what, what, is the problem you maybe have to understand like how can i explain it better in the next time so i'm as you mentioned i'm really on a mission <laughs> to making it more accessible and give my best and feel free to drop me a mail if you have any questions uh thanks for having me and yeah i'm looking forward to the future <laughs> i hope you excellent are too. all right well thanks for joining everyone uh we will be back on wednesday and friday and uh of course every week going forward on adobe live all right see you soon everyone bye bye <laughs>